We've already talked about the purple, green, and blue starter decks, but now I think it's time we optimize the red starter deck. Let's talk about it. Well, what's up captains? Welcome back to the other decks. My name is Casual Dobo, and today we're going to be optimizing the red starter deck for the One Piece CCG. Now, if you're familiar with my channel, you'll already know that we've uh, covered and optimized uh, the purple, green, and blue starter decks for the One Piece CCG, uh, but it came to my attention that I was missing a color. <laughs> so I figured I'd hop onto the camera and uh, just record uh, my version of an optimized red starter deck. And while we're going through this, uh, let me know down in the comments below uh, what do you think about the ratios and, and how this uh, deck might play out in the rest of the starter meta. And while you're down there, if you're enjoying the video, please give it a like and uh, consider subscribing to the channel. We are covering a lot of One Piece just because it was the lead up to uh, the starter decks and, and the official release of the card game. Uh, and in about two to three weeks, we're going to be getting uh, the first booster box, uh, set one, OP01 Romance Dawn. So we'll be covering some then and seeing what cards have been revealed, what kind of decks you can build, um, etc. So it's a really exciting time to be a One Piece fan. And also uh, for uh, the North American uh, players of Digimon, uh, BT9 is coming out soon, so we're going to be doing some more coverage of that. Really just covering all of Bandai's card games, apparently. But no, it's a super exciting time to be a One Piece CCG fan, Digimon TCG fan, um, and I'd love to have you along for the ride. But anyway, that is enough from me. Uh, let's just go ahead and jump right into the deck profile. Alright, and like with all the One Piece CCG deck profiles we've done so far, let's go ahead and take a look at the Dawn Curve. So I think this is really important to see just because it shows pretty much how the deck wants to play and you'll notice that we have a lot of things on the lower end this is a deck that is uh, built low to the ground a lot of our one costs are uh, utility pieces that give us additional effects also some blockers but you'll notice that we have a huge spike in the twos just because a lot of our cards come from there and a lot of our twos are in the sort of 4,000 power range which doesn't really hurt us right uh compared to most other starter decks just because our luffy leader is so good at giving uh characters unrested dawn um so pretty easy to put any of our 4k attackers up to 5k so that they can attack into the leader and i believe this is the only starter deck where the dawn curve kind of caps out at five um because you know uh, green and blue have some seven costs kaido is kaido <laughs> so um, this is definitely something that is going to look to play fast. And kind of representative of that is the fact that we only have 25 counters in here. Four of which do come from a uh, guard point, which is our event counter. Meaning that there's only 21 character um, counters. Which admittingly feels a little bit low. <laughs> Fortunately or unfortunately, uh, a lot of our best cards don't have counter potential. Um, they have amazing effects, but no counter potential. So hopefully uh, their offensive firepower can make up for that. So yeah, that's why I think that even the optimized version of the Red Star deck is uh, win fast. <laughs> but now let's go ahead and actually take a look at the ratios. All right, and here we are at the ratios. And I figured out how to record these things. So <laughs> yeah, I know that the Otama juggle, everything was a little far, a little hard to see. I think this is going to uh, present a lot better. Uh, so yeah, starting us off with our leader. This is a uh, leader Monkey D Luffy, uh, five life, 5,000 power, straw hat crew slash captain. Um, effect is activate main once per turn. Give this leader or one of your characters one rest to dawn. So if you don't know, the whole strategy of uh, the Red Star deck is to, you know, play your cards, rest your dawn in order to play them, but you have additional abilities that give rested dawn onto uh, character cards. And this is important because normally you can't do that. But as I said in the intro, that's why I'm okay with having a few uh, 4,000 power cards just because they get powered up pretty easily. And then obviously once you go further than that with the 5,000, 6,000 attackers, it can get a little out of hand. Uh, going into our character cards, we do have four copies of Chopper. Uh, Chopper is a one cost to play blocker, 1,000 power. I think the cheap blockers are very important for uh, the early parts of the game and probably uh, even further down the line just because cheap can block attacks um, overall just very good. That said obviously it is subject to lots of the removal options in uh, in the game so most likely as soon as you put down the blocker uh, your opponent's going to look for a way to try and you know get rid of it whether it's attacking directly 
or using some event cards. But still very important to have. Next up, we do have four copies of Nami, and I would say, um, and I've said this a few times before, but this is the Onigashima of the Red Star deck, right? This is the card you want to see, this is the card you want to try and mulligan for. One cost to play, 1000 power, does have counter potential, uh, plus 1000, but more importantly, this says activate main once per turn, give your leader or one of your characters one rested dawn. So it's essentially your uh, leader Luffy ability, but on another card. So if you have this on the field and your leader Luffy, uh, you can put two rested dawn onto a character card, which is super important for something like uh, Sanji. A slight spoiler alert. Uh, next up, we do have three copies of Usopp. So uh, this is a uh, two cost, 2000 power, counter plus 1000 so ability uh dawn times one when attacking your opponent cannot activate blocker of 5000 uh, or higher power characters uh during this turn i said that a little clunky so essentially if your opponent has a blocker that's 5000 power or higher it cannot activate for the battle and i know there's a discrepancy here uh, this card says dawn times one but that says dawn times two so let me take a look at something real quick. All right, so I did go on a little bit of an adventure, uh, went into uh, the One Piece uh, card game uh, Discord group, uh, just to confirm that this is correct, the Dawn times two. So not Dawn times one, Dawn times two, when attacking, uh, opponent can't activate blocker of 5,000 or higher power characters during the battle. Um, and then also this does have a trigger ability, uh, play this card, so if you have Usopp, uh, come out of life you can play it for free now i was debating pretty heavily between even including usopp versus um something like jinbei um and ultimately <laughs> i did have jinbei up until the point i started hitting record on this video and that's mostly because of what we know from the blue star decks right back when i first made the optimized star deck it was only based on purple and i was like yeah queen whatever but because blue has so many more blockers um and then green also has some wild blockers um i think usopp becomes a little bit more valuable that said you do need to put three dawn onto him in order to make him work essentially i know the ability says dawn times two but it only puts you up to uh 4, power if you use a thousand sunny it can put you up to 5,000, but I'm not really relying on that. But I think what really did it for me was that it does have counter potential in plus 1,000, which Jinbei does not. And I was already struggling with the fact that like a lot of the good cards don't have counters. And so I was like, I need to put more counters in here. I think because of all of those factors, Usopp is a slightly better card than Jinbei. But let me know what you think down in the comments below. Moving on to the next card, we do have four copies of Brook, uh, two cost to play, 3,000 power, but counter potential plus 2,000. And then on play, uh, give your leader or one of your characters two rested dawn cards. And so if you've seen any gameplay of this red starter deck, um, there is a combo in here uh, they can do on turn two if you have them in hand, where you uh, play the Sanji, play the Brook, and then put two cards onto Sanji, and that would activate Sanji's ability. So overall, Brook is very good, plus it is our, as I think the Eggman puts it, our super counter, and gives us plus 2000 as opposed to uh, the normal 1000. I mentioned him a couple times already, but this is our Sanji, 4 cost of play, 4000 power, no counters. But if you do have uh, 2 Dawn attached to it, this character gains Rush. Also, as a quick thing, no matter if you put Active Dawn to Sanji, Rested Dawn to Sanji, it will still get the plus 1000 for the turn. So uh, this becomes a 6k attacker with Rush. And I've already talked about a couple different ways you can put Dawn onto him. Uh, obviously, you can put two Active Dawn to give him Rush. Uh, Brook will allow you to put two uh, Rested Dawn onto him while also putting another character onto the board. And then if you have just a Nami, a single Nami, and your leader, uh, you can also use both of their effects combined to put two Dawn onto uh, Sanji. So yeah, the way those uh, abilities synergize, it is pretty easy uh, to get Sanji to get Rush, um, as long as you have the cards in hand to do so. Next up, we do have three copies of uh, Vivi. So this is a two cost to play, 4,000 power, counter plus 1,000. This is a vanilla, but like I said before, we were running low on counters, and this was honestly the last card that I inserted into the optimized deck. Um, just because it is a vanilla, but 4,000 power, like I said, it's pretty easy to bump up into 5, so that it becomes a viable attacker. 2 cost of play is pretty efficient, to be honest. And then, yeah, counter potential is super important, just because even though we want to, you know, go low to the ground, do some, like, rush abilities to try and win fast, 
we do need to get to the point where we can survive long enough to win fast, you know? So VV just kind of helps our survivability. Next up, we do have uh, four copies of Nico Robin. Uh, so this is a three cost to play, 5,000 power, counter, plus 1,000, uh, and is also a uh, vanilla. Does have the Straw Hat Crew typing, which is important for the Thousand Sunny, which is also a good point about Vivi real quick. Uh, she does not have that typing, so you can't use a Thousand Sunny's ability on Vivi, uh, but you can on Nico Robin. In fact, you can use it on most things except for Vivi. But Robin is really good because uh, she is a natural attacker at 5,000, so no need to attach any Dawn to her um, in order to attack into the leader. And even though it's a vanilla card, because it's a natural attacker, because it has counter potential, that's why I have four copies of it. Moving on, we do have four copies of Zoro. So three cost to play, 5,000 power, so another natural attacker. No counter potential, which is uh, kind of a, a slight minus, but overall it does have a very good ability. Uh, Dawn times one, this character gains plus 1,000 power. So the way that this works is that you have it on the board, and if it's available to attack right, um, you attach one Dawn to it, you'll get the plus 1,000 from its ability, the plus 1,000 from the Dawn, because it's your turn, and so you have a 7k attacker. Now, when you pass turn, because that Dawn is still attached to Zoro, while you're not getting the 1,000 from the Dawn itself, you are still getting the 1,000 from its ability, because it doesn't specify uh, for this turn or for the battle. That means that your opponent is looking at a 6k target to try and swing over. And that's a kind of important thing to think about from a defensive standpoint, just because uh, most likely your opponent is going to need to attach some sort of Dawn or you know power up their characters somehow to swing over it. And honestly, the longer the Zora lasts onto the field, the better, because it's a good attacker. Yeah, the lack of counter potential does kind of suck, but the offensive firepower it brings is very, very good. Speaking of offensive firepower, we do have three copies of Frankie. So this is a four cost to play, 6,000 power, counter potential plus 1,000. So this is good because by turn two or turn three, if you went first, uh, you'll have four Dawn available to play this card. And it's 6,000 power, so if you swing into your opponent's leader, uh, most likely they're going to need to use two different resources to try and uh, block over that, assuming that they don't block, you know? So yeah, uh, in the early uh, starter deck meta, the 6k attackers are just um, very potent offensively, and kind of a problem if you're seeing it as an opponent. It forces the other player to try and figure out a way to deal with it, you know? But we have three copies of it. And then our last character for the deck is going to be our four copies of Monkey D. Luffy. So this is a five cost to play, 6,000 power, but it has rush inherently. And then Dawn times two, when attacking, uh, your opponent can't activate blocker for the battle. So yeah, this is very solid. This is often um, the card that is going to win you matches, right? Uh, five cost to play. By the time you're, you're seeing this in hand, it's probably like turn four, turn five, so you should have all of your Dawn available by then. Uh, tap five, use some abilities, either your Nami or your leader, uh, to put two onto it, and your opponent can't block. So if they don't have any life, you win the game. Well, they can counter, but you have a good shot at winning the game. So two Dawn, because two Dawn attached to it would make this an 8,000 attacker with Rush. Um, if they have a blocker, they could, you know, jump block it. But if they don't, um, they are going to need to use some resources in order to bring it up past 8,000. You could use like a super counter and a regular counter. Oh, that even wouldn't do it. You need <laughs> Your opponent needs to get to 9k, which is kind of wild. Not even guard point will get an opposing uh, leader Luffy to that point. Because as you might know already, uh, if it in the case of a tie, attacker wins. So yeah, Monkey D. Luffy, incredibly solid card. That's why we want four of it. And then moving into our options, do have four copies of guard point. Uh, this is our one cost to play a counter event card. Uh, ability says your leader or one of your characters gains plus 3,000 for the battle. Um, so it's that particular individual battle. Um, but its trigger ability says uh, your leader or one of your characters gains plus 1,000 power for the turn. But yeah, this is overall very good um, event counter. And also, one cost to play, only need one Dawn. It's pretty good compared to some of the other star decks. Next up, we do have four copies of Jet Pistol. So this is four cost to play. However, uh, KO one of your opponent's characters with 6,000 power or less. And then uh, its trigger ability is activate this card's main ability. So yeah, this is a red card in a Bandai TCG, so there had to be some sort of hard targeted removal. Gaia Force, I'm looking at you. <laughs> and for most of the starter deck meta, um, there are a lot of things 6,000 power or less. There's almost very few things above that. But yeah, very good event card. That's why we have four copies. Next up, and this is a spicy take. 
I have two copies of uh, Diable Jam. Also, I don't know how to pronounce that, so if anyone can let me know in the comments below, please uh, inform me. <laughs> but this is a one cost to play. Ability says choose one of your leaders or characters with the Straw Hat crew type um, or trait, I mean. Uh, during this turn, your opponent cannot activate blocker when that leader or character attacks. You can turn any of your things into uh, your Rush Luffy, essentially. And the reason I'm including two copies of this is, one, I remember thinking it's not that great of a card, to be honest. But with what we know about the blue and green starter decks, this becomes a just slightly more valuable card. And it's one cost to play. So uh, this is more of a, you know, if you want to call it like a meta call, right? Um, where people are going to be building in more blockers into their um, optimized starter decks. Um, I think this can have some really uh, useful potential in certain situations. And because it is that specific, that's why I only put two copies of it, but it can come in clutch. So uh, good to include. If you're looking for space to cut things out and you're not too worried about blockers, um, I would look into here as a potential, uh, you know, take two out, put two more things in, say like a Jinbei or something. And then the last card for the deck is the three copies of the Thousand Sunny. So this is a stage card, which I, I feel like we haven't talked about in a very long time. Um, but two cost of play, stage card, activate main, you can rest this stage. One uh, Straw Hat Crew type leader or character on the field gains plus 1000 for the turn. So this is good to just pile on to some of our other abilities, um, some of our attackers, make them even stronger so our opponent has to uh, make some tough choices about the resources in hand. That said, this is not as important as, say, Onigashima from the purple starter deck. I can live without it. And that's why I don't have full, like, four copies of it. I only need three, um, just because I think that is a good amount to, uh, you know, I'll see it when I need to, but it's not going to clog my hand if I get, like, two, you know. But yeah, that is the uh, optimized red starter deck. Um, please let me know down in the comments below uh, what you think. Was I correct in putting Usopp in here? Am I justified in worrying about blockers so much? Let me know. Overall, my thoughts on the red starter deck in general is uh, it's it's in an interesting spot, right? Uh, it's actually, in my opinion, one of the only starter decks amongst the four that we have so far um, where it wants to win as quickly as possible. Like, if you look at, um, you know, the Crocodile starter deck Kid, Kaido, um, a lot of those do want to work more in the mid to late game. Um, I mean, I've seen a lot of green players kind of hang back um, and then let their board develop and then go into... Um, sort of their attacks. Blue has a bunch of bounce mechanics, which kind of stall the game out a little bit. And so it's interesting to see this type of strategy for the Red Star deck. I mean, it makes sense from a color identity standpoint, uh, but the fact that it is like the only one of the four is kind of wild. But I think this is super fun, and there is a pretty significant upgrade path when you um, go into set one, just based on all of the things we've seen already. A lot of the Straw Hats are <laughs> very good. So, and this is my personal opinion, if you're not looking to win a whole lot of things in these first three weeks of the game, uh, the Red Star deck is worth, you know, a pickup. Because in set one, you're feasting. <laughs> it's, it's, it's real good. Like, almost all of these cards get swapped out for better Straw Hats. <laughs> At least that's how I build it. Um, but if you're interested to see what that might look like, let me know in the comments below. Maybe that would be the next video. Yeah, just because I do read all those comments, and if it wasn't for the comment section, I probably wouldn't have made this optimized star deck. So, uh, thank you. Appreciate it. But anyway, I think that'll do it for me. So, thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it. And captains, remember, build what you like, play what you love. And I'll catch you in the next video. Have a good one.